One day, while taking an afternoon hike on a local deserted island, or so he thought, Willis finds himself overrun and captured by the island's primitive native tribe. He quickly realizes that they are restless because the island's once inactive volcano started smoking and spewing lava, and the people there are afraid. To Willis's dismay, the natives have decided to feed Willis to the volcano as a sacrifice in an effort to appease it. They immediately begin preparations for the sacrificial ceremony, which they plan to perform the next morning. Luckily, the tribal princess has sympathy for Willis and tells him that the natives have been working on an alternative solution to the volcano problem. They believe that filling the volcano with water will calm it down, but they're having trouble finding the volcano's volume, so they're not sure how much water they'll need. Now they've been forced to go with their second best option, which is sacrificing Willis. The princess shows Willis a schematic that the mathematicians have made of the volcano. Thankfully, he just recently reviewed his calculus notes on trapezoidal rule, which he quickly realizes he can use to find the volume of the volcano. Since the cross-sectional area of the volcano is constant, Willis can find the volcano's volume by taking the area of a cross-section and then multiplying his answer by the volcano's height. Willis thinks he can approximate the cross-sectional area with pretty good accuracy if he uses 20 rectangles, so he gets to work right away. After all, the sun is setting quickly. He's toast if he doesn't figure this out by morning. To make it easier on himself, Willis decides to find the areas of each half of the volcano separately. He finds a stick and starts outlining the trapezoidal rule formula in the sand. He knows that he has to find delta x by subtracting the left endpoint from the right endpoint and then dividing by the number of rectangles he's using. Once he finds delta x, he divides by 2 and then multiplies that by the sum of the height of each rectangle, remembering to multiply the heights of all the inner rectangles by 2. Now that Willis has his formula written out, he gets to work on estimating the heights of the rectangles in the top half of the schematic and plugging them into his equation. Once he has all his numbers plugged in, he smooths out another section of sand to start on his arithmetic. If only he brought his calculator with him! He finds that the area of the top half is 79.2 square units, so he multiplies by 50 since each unit on the schematic represents 50 feet in the actual volcano. This gives him a total square footage of the top half of the schematic of 198,000. Once he finishes with the top half, Willis turns the schematic upside down and starts on the second half. Again, he estimates the height of each rectangle and plugs the information into the formula. When he's finished, he finds that the area of the bottom half is 109.1 square units. So again, he multiplies by 50 to get a total square footage of 272,750. Finally, he adds both areas together to find the square footage of the entire cross section, which is 479,750 square feet. To find the volume, Willis knows that all he has to do is multiplied by the height of the volcano, which is 1,254 feet. When he does, he finds that the volume is a whopping 590,320,500 cubic feet. The princess is more than a little impressed, but Willis is too relieved to notice, since the natives have agreed not to sacrifice him, now that they know how much water they'll need to satisfy the volcano. Though he'd love to stay and chat with the princess, Willis decides he better head out and get off the island before the natives realize how much water it's going to take to fill 590 million cubic feet.